Okay, only launched uh, or relaunched the Brunix website today. Already had a couple of messages regarding the background images. So just wait for this to go forwards and then we'll race that forward. See how I put the image in the background here of the Brunix install and do another one. And then we've got the Splink system inside this big screen. And then we've got the IDS inside this tablet. And also, if you go and have a look at my music page, um, up on my SoundCloud, I created... Oh, you can't actually see it. I'll bring it up. Hold on. Uh, you'll see I created the CD here. So it's actually really easy to do. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm using the GNU image manipulation program to put images inside a CD or images inside a laptop, as I've done here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Right, so firstly, let me go over to GIMP. Here's GIMP. Now I found this image on... Uh, Google image search to show you how to do that go over here go home search for let's say laptop oh you you'll do this in Google so let's do that um, google.com and search for laptop and then we'll do an image search. Now the thing is, it has to be quite a high res image. So we'll click search tools. And we'll go more tools. Oh no. Oh, here it is. Size. Large. Now of course I don't want any of these stock images. You want something like that that's got a background to it. Yeah, see this could take a bit of time. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, actually, I'll show you the CD as well. So if I just scroll to the top. Now I'm doing an image search. So if I go CD, I'm looking for a transparent one. Right, so now it's showing me a bunch of CD images that are meant to be kind of transparent. That's a nice one. Just go down here. Yeah, they're all not bad. I do quite like that one. Let's have a look at that. Now the thing is, if it's got a white background, it actually means it's not transparent. So we don't want it. This one's got a bunch of yeah, that doesn't look transparent either. So in Google, when you click on an image, if it does have a transparent background, it does this grey white box thing. But I can tell that's not real because in Google they're a lot smaller. Ah, here, here it is. This is the one that I found. I think it is. Yes, it is. See how those blocks are a lot smaller? That is actually... A true transparent background so what I'll do is in this blog I'll create a link to this so you can download that as well but let's go back to um, GIMP right okay so I found my background image now I want to put an image inside this screen got this Kiwi over here it's not very big hmm. That isn't very big. Actually, that's not big enough. I'll try something else. I'll go and grab another one. Uh, you need quite high resolution images. And when I say high resolution, it needs to be over a thousand pixels. So I'm just going to organize this by size. Anything that is a larger file size will be a good image.
Oh, none of these are very good examples. <laughs> ah, here, here we go. My IDS system. So I'll grab that. Here it is. And I go Control C and I copy that. Then I go back to the tablet. I oh, actually not the tablet. I'm going to use the laptop. And I go Control V. Okay, it's not as high res as I'd like it to be, but that's okay. Still work. Um, when I'm going to put an image inside another image, move it away from where you want it to be, and I'll show you why soon. Um, if you hover over here, you'll see the perspective tool. This is actually one of my favorite tools in GIMP. Now watch this. I click on that, click on the image that I want to transform, and I just roughly drag it to the corner and grab that other corner and bring that down and grab the left corner now you see why I put it way over to the left it just means it's easier to position and you're not going to be exact you're just going to be rough okay here we go now what I do is I go um, on the keyboard I go control plus or shift plus sorry shift plus lets me zoom in and I want to zoom in because I know it's a real high res image. So I want to zoom in really close because that will help me align it a lot better. And then I go right. Now I'm going to grab that little edge there. Pull that down. I'm not actually worried that it's actually overlapping a little bit. Don't care about that because... Remember, it's a really high resolution image. When I resample it to be smaller, that stuff is just going to blur out anyway. Hold on, and I'll just do each of these corners. See this black down here? We don't really want that, eh? So we just pull that up a little bit. That'll do. We kind of do a little bit of the black because it acts like shadow. So I'll drag that across. Oop. So my graphics card is not that great. That's why it's a bit jumpy. I don't really care though. Most of the stuff I do is not graphics anymore. See how that's covering over that corner? I don't really care. Because when I resample it, it's not going to matter. And last corner over here and then click and drag on that corner bring it down and I do want a bit of drop shadow on the left over here now if I press the minus key on the keyboard it'll zoom out and that's looking pretty good and I'll just bring all the time whilst I've been doing this the perspective tool has been calculating stuff I click transform and then it resizes it right so now I go image flatten image and though that's not perfect I'll just zoom out a little bit it's not too bad but you can see like on the left hand side it's not the right depth but you can see that's how easy it is to put an image on there now let's go and have a look at the CD okay so here's the CD it's nice it's got heaps of transparency so what I'll do is I'll go and grab this photo of this Kiwi it's not very good res but I'll grab it and I'll go paste oh yep that is really bad don't worry about it I'm gonna resize it so it fits so I just clicked on the scale tool, click on the image. Um, I'm going to hold down control and shift as I do this and it'll scale it proportionately. Yeah, that looks about right. And then I go scale. And then I grab the pick tool. Well, it's called the move tool in this program. It's not big enough, so I'll just do that again. Go scale, 
And to grab the bottom right corner, control shift. That'll do. Scale. And to grab the move tool. Yeah, still not big enough. Click. Control shift. Now it's big enough. Right. So now we've got our image here, but we can't see the background. If I hide that image by clicking on that eye, we can see the background. But you'll see that it's it's not actually its own layer. So I'll right click on it and I'll go to new layer. And now it is a new layer. And then what I'll do is I'll drag it down below the CD. So now the CD is on top of it. But what I need to do is I need to get rid of all this background stuff. So I click on my mask tool or my eclipse mask tool and I find the best way to do it is you see where my cursor is here I just line up the, the top and the top left and then I drag down holding oops holding shift until it gets to the bottom I do the same at the bottom bottom right and bottom bottom edge uh, actually I want to do a bit more so I'm actually going to do it right to the edge it doesn't matter anyway because I can adjust it um, in this case we actually want it there so we can see we've got our mask going around there we've got our image selected but the problem is that selecting the inside of the image I want to select the outside of the image so I go over here and I go select and I go invert and now it's selecting the outside of the image go control X there we go backgrounds deleted now we also need to delete out the inner circle so I roughly go around about here and I go shift on my keyboard and I draw a rough circle for the area that I want to crop and I grab that top left corner and I pull it in that's good and I go control X and now I've deleted out the middle as well so let me just grab my pick tool again so uh, nothing selective in fact I could go control shift A and that means nothing selected and that's actually a pretty good image now let me show you this if I go file export as and it's going into pictures and I'll just call it sample if I could spell sample there we go and it by default saves it as a PNG which has all the transparency and stuff that's fine uh, JPEG doesn't have transparency so now if I go and open up that image it's right at the top there and if I right click on that and I go open with G thumb it doesn't matter if you're in Windows hold on I need to bring this into your screen um, it doesn't matter if you're in Windows or Ubuntu or Mac OS X it's the same but as you can see now it's a nice looking CD so that's how you can use GIMP to put images inside other images. Um, if you've got any questions, just reply to one of my social media pages. Um, I know you can't reply here, but if you go up here, you can choose any of these. Or you can actually go to the blog itself, like one of these blogs. And you'll notice right at the bottom of the page you can actually give a comment so that's how you do it uh, yep again if you've got any questions let me know